Democratic Party. Very good morning and uh, welcome to the program, gentlemen. Uh, thank you. How are you doing? We are good. We it's are. a Monday, a new week, yeah. new opportunities, new challenges to face. Mm. How are we moving on that? Uh, first of all, I want to thank our esteemed viewers. Yes. For according uh, this talk show sometime. And also thank you in a special way for extending an invitation to the Democratic Party and specifically the spokesperson. This is a new week. We are expecting a lot. Our expectations, expectations are high. And uh, we are praying that God does guide us. And uh, uh, I think we await the president's communication. Mm. Uh, that's one. But also, there shouldn't be much that is expected, as you have earlier noted, <laughs> because uh, you see, president our president, to our, our president, our president can easily be predicted. Mm. I, I could, I could tell you what he would say, but of course, giving a deviation, and he would not disappoint. Wow. Yeah. All right, uh, <coughs> Mr. Nyangweso, Honorable. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I want to thank the viewers of NTV for staying tuned here. This is my first time to be on NTV, so oh, thank you you're so most, much. You're most welcome. I hope for further interactions. Uh, one, it's a new week, and uh, we expect a lot. Why? Because uh, the parliament was just opened last week with the State of the Nation address, and mm. the president uh, highlighted a lot of issues we face as a country, where we are. And therefore, the country is so expectant mm. of how some of these challenges are going to be addressed. And this can only be done through the budget, okay. which uh, we are expecting tomorrow. So we already have where we are, what we are facing. We only need to know how we are going to, to go beyond the, the problems we have been uh, told by the president, how mm. the economy is doing, how the population is, and... Uh, what interventions the government intends to. All right, thank you very much. I'll keep, uh, or rather stay with you, Honorable Nyangwe. So you're a member of parliament, and of course, uh, deliberations on the national budget, uh, right from uh, the point of the budget framework paper. You've been uh, buried in one way or the other into it, and uh, we know exactly what's going on. Just give us a brief of uh, where we are. We all have an idea of the 48 trillion shilling budget that is uh, gonna be read. Everything has been uh, outlined uh, pretty much, but you as, the person or one of those people who are buried in the making and the design of this particular budget, what should we fundamentally look out for? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, moderator. Yeah, it's true. I have been part of the um, budget formulation process mm. right from the budget conference in September last year. Why? Because um, I happened to sit on the committee mm. of budget of parliament. But I'm also a member of the Presidential Advisory Committee on the Budget, the PACOB, where I sit as a Vice Chair on Public Sector Transformation Cluster. Mm. And uh, there, we are privileged to, first of all, um, get the government priorities, align them both to the National Development Plan 3, and also on the promises of the sitting government, that's the NRM manifesto. Mm. And uh, I was part of that team under uh, PACOM. And uh, from there, we delved into the, the budget conferences, which took place in the, the entire country. And uh, it culminated into the development of the budget framework paper that was presented to, to Parliament last year, discussed through the various sector committees, and then the budget committee presentation to the house. Mm. We saw the budget framework paper, of course, had uh, uh, figures that were around 47 trillion shillings. Mm. People might be wondering why we have moved it to 48. <coughs> but uh, from the time of the budget framework paper and the discussions on the government priorities, and allocations and reallocations, I think um, by the time now we moved to the ministerial policy statements mm. that were presented to parliament, yeah. we're almost hitting the 48 trillion target. Mm. And of course, there were some adjustments that were done through recommendations of the sector committees to the budget committee. And also, 
the, the, the priorities mm. which uh, the, 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 the budget committee considered while presenting to the House. And that's how we ended up with the 48 trillion budget. How is this 48 trillion budget uh, going to be financed? Mm. Uh, we expect 25 trillion to come from mm. revenue collections. And uh, particularly tax revenue is going to have the highest uh, revenue, I mean, uh, source of income, which mm. is 23.7 trillion. Out of the 25 trillion we expect to, to get from uh, revenue collections, we have. Um, we are going to do a lot of domestic uh, borrowing. Almost 12 trillion shillings is going to go into domestic borrowing. That's, a huge, that's a huge percentage. It's a very huge percentage. But out of the 12 trillion, uh, 12 trillion eight mm. is refinancing. Mm. We are going to pay in order to borrow. I don't know whether you get that. Mm. So not all the 12 trillion is going to be. We are going to borrow 12 trillion, but out of which 28. I mean, eight trillion will be for refinancing. Basically, we are going to borrow on top the four trillion to mm. make twelve trillion. Of okay. course, uh, we expect uh, mm, external borrowing, which is almost uh, seventy trillion. Mm. Then we have also some budget support to total now up to forty-eight point one trillion shillings. Okay. Uh, now, when we go to the appropriation, mm -hmm. we have um, key sectors. You saw. Those of you who listen to the president, the <laughs> president uh, <laughs> talked an about... That's an interesting one. Those yes, of you who listen to yes, the president. those of you who listen <laughs> to the president. Because our colleagues in the alternative or the mm. opposition were not part of us at the opening of the second session. But I'm very sure they also they, listen, they listen, they listen no to one because they have a, a constitutional requirement to respond to the president's address. Mm. In his address, the president guided us that in order to transform this country, we must add value to what we produce. So it's not uh, just about producing, but adding value, adding to, value what to what we produce. So we expect much of this budget, actually, to talk to this problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are very expectant of tomorrow's budget. We want to know, does the solution talk to the problem? Because mm -hmm. the problem has already been Identify. Identified. Yeah. So want to see that how is what is important. Th that's how we are going to. Okay, that's a very uh, good uh, analysis of uh, the overall uh, look of uh, the budget as it will be presented uh, tomorrow. Let me come to you, Opio Okaleo, spokesperson mm. for the Democratic Party. Mm. He has just alluded to the fact that the alternative government, the opposition, uh, boycotted and perhaps might have not listened to the president, though they are mandated by constitution to listen and then offer reaction to his speeches. We do hope they listen in tomorrow both to the minister and uh, the president. But from your point of view, the Democratic Party, you have members of parliament <coughs> who are buried in the thick and thin of uh, the construction of the greater budget framework and how it uh, rolls out. Do you see this as a recovery budget, one that is taking Ugandans out of very hard times and easing the pain and perhaps ushering us into, well, not necessarily heaven or bliss, but to a point where we are sustainable enough to inch forward? Well, I, I want to thank my colleague, the mm. Honorable Nyangwesho, for he has uh, dissected briefly yeah. what uh, there is in the budget. Uh, we have got uh, qualifications as the Democratic Party. Mm. Because when you look at this budget, it does not deviate in a substantive manner from the previous budgets. Mm. The government priorities have remained the same, despite of the fact that we do not uh, agree with uh, some of their priorities. For instance, you, when you look at the budgets that this government has been releasing from 1986, mm. they have not been giving priority to agriculture. Uh, in fact, agriculture has been receiving between 1 to 3% yeah. of the annual budget. And uh, even this time around, we are not disappointed because I see here they are giving it a 2.64%. So uh, the reason why as Democratic Party we do think agriculture should be prioritized is because the biggest population, actually the previous government constructed the population mm. to be a population that benefits in agriculture. 
and to be a population that does actually uh, 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 get a livelihood from agriculture. No wonder, today we have 80%, mm -hmm. I think my colleague will agree with me, 80% of our people uh, uh, you know, involved in agriculture. But of the 80, 68% of these are in subsistence farming. Mm -hmm. Like what you grow is what you eat. Now, we are telling government that look, in the process of budgeting, you deliberately allocate a substantive amount of money to the agriculture sector, such that this substantive amount of money can lift the 68%. And lifting the financial standing of the 68% who are involved in agriculture shall literally mean that you will be increasing your tax base from the one million that we have currently to a, a, a bigger one. Because currently, uh, the Honorable will agree with me that our tax base is one million. We have one million taxpayers. Mm. And the one million taxpayers is what we're expecting, the 25 trillion to that we from. have tasked mm. URA to produce in this financial year. Mm. So I, I, I really think that uh, the government should do revise on its priorities. Yeah, giving, giving infrastructure development a higher amount because infrastructure has always been higher than agriculture. In fact, even here, when you look at infrastructure, they have given it 8.67. And yet agriculture is having 2.64. We are asking as Democratic Party, why did you first construct a road mm. that moves from here, I mean that, that leads to Palisa, where I come from, mm. but without empowering my mother who lives in Palisa and the people therein, to produce such that that road can economically benefit them in terms of transporting their produce mm. to the market where these roads lead to. Well, just to uh, allow me interject there and uh, perhaps bring a bit of perspective and context to this. When the president says industrialization and even infrastructure for that matter are critical to taking the nation forward, perhaps what he's looking at is the fact that before you, the road comes in play mm. and it's in place so that when you reorganize, and produce there is ready accessibility to markets unlike where you have been uh, enabled to do the production but then when the produce is up for example the harvest you do not have where to transport this particular is it something that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> well i i i think uh, it, it is a, it is a, it is a, it has a semblance mm -hmm. of an analogy of uh, buying pampas before the child comes forth. Well, the chicken and the egg. <laughs> <laughs> the so, so and the egg. it's not the chicken and the egg. Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. My point is, you, 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 for 36 years, the NRM government has given priority to the infrastructure. Oh, perhaps. I, I, and, I, now, and I will tell you why. That now is the issue. And I will tell you why. Mm. You see, we have external development partners. Now, these external development partners have got... I, I mean, they, 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 their money is conditioned. Mm. If you want their money, you must be, you know, going to direct it somewhere. Where they want the it infrastructure, to Where they want yeah. you to direct it. Now, in the process, the government has succumbed. They go, pick money. Mas uh, I don't want to say masquerading, but like under the pretext of infrastructure development. But in actual sense, when that money gets here, they end up, channeling it, it does not substantively do the infrastructure uh, to the percentage, to the level mm. that they present they before present the external the uh, uh, development partners. Mm. I want to give you an example that uh, we, uh, we, are in, we, are, we are considering National Development Plan 3. When you look at the, the, the roads, we have over 20,000 kilometers of main roads, what you mm. call UNRWA roads. UNRWA roads. But out of that, the NRM government has constructed uh, at most 60,000, at most 60,000 kilometers for 36 years. Now, uh, going by that speed, it would mean that the NRM would need like 140 years to construct the 20,000 kilometer across the country. Across the country. That's one. Mm. They, they, they usually say we have constructed the roads, we have constructed the roads, but this is the, now this is the report card. Mm. Magufuli in Tanzania, in the four years that he spent in leadership, mm. they had constructed at least 20, uh, 2,600 
kilometers in four years. You get the point. Mm -hmm. Now, if in 36 years, the NRM government can construct 60,000, and Magufuli in four years would construct almost a half of that, then I wonder, what's the difference? What's making the difference? So well, I, th I think, I think, that's I think a there, is a, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of mm. corruption. There are lots of gray areas. There are lots of leakages mm. in this government that we have to cover. I will personally say the jury is very much uh, still out on that. And of mm. course, uh, there's a gentleman earlier in the w last week who was telling us that uh, President Yuri Kaguta's Museven uh, legacy shall be written after he has left power. We shouldn't so be uh, <laughs> making analogies of what he has done in 36 years, although it mm. is perfect. Uh, within uh, your mandate to do so. But let's just go into the... No, no, maybe uh, before the colleague comes, before just, just, just a small just one. one. Uh, there is no reason why mm -hmm. you should invest in, for instance, electricity. It is okay. But when the polls pass by people's you know, land mm. and the people cannot benefit out of that. So we still insist as Democratic Party Give priority to agriculture. Give the people capacity. Such that if, by the way, do you know that connecting your house with electricity, it is more expensive than some houses that Ugandans sleep in, in the villages. A person sleeps in a house of 100 or less. Mm. And connecting a power goes for around 2 million plus. Now, where are you leaving those people? You are constructing a country with a substantive distinction between, actually you are creating classes among people, mm. and you are, you are, you, you, you are sealing and, and buttressing that gap. Because there are people in Uganda who have no dream of enjoying the power. We they shall be asking the Democratic Party for an alternative uh, policy, you know, framework. Of we, 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 we have those, we have those, and we have, we have presented, exactly we have presented them. But allow me bring in the Honorable Member of Parliament, especially on integrated transport infrastructure development. He says that, uh, well, it is okay to have these roads in place, but perhaps nothing or very little is being done in terms of ensuring that it's actually as uh, sufficient as it ought to be. You were in the thick of uh, defining this particular budget. What informed uh, those specifics? Yeah, thank you so much. When I was at university, in mm. my economic class, I was uh, exposed to stages of growth. Mm. And in the stages of growth, we have a predominantly traditional prim primitive society. Then we have, um, in order for that society to transform, there is that precondition to take off. Mm. Now, in that precondition to take off, there are certain undertakings mm. that uh, governments must do in order to prepare that economy for a takeoff. And some of these preconditions to take off uh, initiatives mm. include what my colleague here is, is, is challenging, development of infrastructure. No, this is a precondition to take off. You must generate enough power in order to attract industries to consume this power. You must interlink the country such that business, uh, businessmen and uh, goods can easily flow. Mm. But uh, I want to a greater extent agree, want to agree with him on two issues. One, the percentage of the budget we spend on the agriculture is relatively still very low. But I want to give him hope that <laughs> in this budget <laughs> we have seen a wow. deliberate allocation of funds for mm. the parish model, parish development model. This parish development model is supposed to help us to generate production. Mm. But as you have rightly said, what will happen if there is instant production without consumption of these goods and services? Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to concurrently develop the ability to transform what we intend to produce under the parish development model into goods and services that are going to be of value, both to help us as a country to grow and also to help the country to reduce on imports. 
Okay. So that is now the, the challenge. So That's when challenge. you look at the parish development model, and uh, people have been critiquing it because uh, the way it is Which being is expected and yes, very natural. The, the way it is being implemented mm. and the way it is being reported on. I, I also want to challenge uh, my colleagues in the Minister of Finance and uh, the executive that they are painting a very good picture about a project that we had a lot of hope in as members of parliament. Mm. We fought in it. But when you see that we are ending the financial year next week, mm. and even the 17 million that, that was, was appropriated mm. to, to, to go down to the parishes. Has not gone. I, I come from a constituency where no parish has received this money. Yeah. And now we intend to, to give more. So we must have an explanation. And we expect the president to, 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 to frankly talk about this tomorrow. Mm. Other than telling us that we, we have, uh, like he surprised us last week and said we are middle income status. We don't want him well, to surprise us that mm -hmm. we have sent money we, to we your parishes. We've sent money to the well, parishes and if, you haven't, if the parish. you haven't received it, then perhaps uh, you are the problem. Uh, Opio Okoleo, mm. debt is expected to continue rising. Right now we are in projections of about 52% of GDP. Mm. This is worrying. And of course, uh, the MP alluded to the fact that uh, much of the money will go into rebalancing the debt equation to allow us to be able to get, get borrow more money, mm. which will again put this burgeoning debt to another homogas figure or a point. Mm. What's your take on that? Well, I, I think as a country, we are living in a, an economic cycle. Mm. And we seem not to be doing much to move out of this cycle. We, we can only move out of this cycle if we do empower our population mm. to pay taxes. Because th there is no any other remedy to the overwhelming debts. Mm that one has other than enhancing, enhancing that ability. person's financial standing. Mm. Now, uh, as a country, we have to enhance our economic muscle. And how do we do that? We are lucky we have a population. We are lucky we have a, a, a good environment. Mm. We are lucky all the indicators do point to the fact that the biggest Population or what we can easily earn money from is agriculture. Mm. We have crops that I would say gold crops like coffee. Mm -hmm. But I am thinking that the government is not doing much to sit with that we exploit the advantages that we have to our benefit. I go back to my point. Let's invest substantively and deliberately mm. in agriculture. And let's not focus on, I would say, uh, uh, quick exotic means like parish development model, where you come and you say, we are adding, we are aiming at adding value. Adding value to what? Have you been part of the process that has led to what you want to add value to? I think the government should go back to, on the, to the drawing board and say, let's first participate in the process of bringing forth what we want to add value to. In, in, in so doing, we shall have a bigger, you know, a, a, a bigger volume of what we want to add value to. And that shall substantively benefit the country and it trickle down mm. to the economic standing of Ugandans. Okay, talking about adding value to uh, as I crops speak now, or good. Uh -huh. As I speak now, uh, you see when you read the when you read the appropriation act, the appropriation act. Yeah. You realize that we are spending thirty, I think thirty three trillion, in this budget mm. out of the forty eight. We are spending thirty three trillion on services and supplies. That means that if we don't cut our expenditures. And yet, we do not increase our income. We shall continue borrowing. And we shall continue swimming 
in these waters of debts. The MP is right here and uh, sitting on the budget committee. He should be able to uh, give us an idea of how exactly that can be achieved. However, it comes with the backdrop of members of parliament uh, seeking to have an increment in their own salary at a time when the average Ugandan is grappling with inability to afford the basic goods. The government has come under intense criticism to preach or walk the talk in terms of uh, frugality and uh, calling on Ugandans to live within their means. But if MPs and uh, the government, the top honchos, the State House, uh, the Judiciary and Cabinet Ministers are unable to cut down on expenditure, then it means we are, fi we are hitting a dead end even before we begin <laughs> an attempt to the journey. Should, should you be asking for salary increment right now? Yeah, thank you so much, moderator. One, before I go to that, mm. uh, there was a discussion here about how do we navigate mm. the, 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 the limited resources vis-a-vis -vis the enormous demands. I mean, uh, you, you, Uganda Revenue Authority came to Parliament and presented to us and asked us to support them. Mm. They have a domestic revenue mobilization strategy which they required us to support in terms of funding mm. such that uh, they are able, because right now they told us that uh, the tax to GDP ratio is uh, um, it's not even 15 percent and uh, if we fund them they, they have projected how they are going to move from the 25 trillion in 2022 mm. to 45 trillion in 2027 and uh, th they need a deliberate a deliberate government plan mm. to fund them such that w w we can reduce on this burden of borrowing you know borrowing one i am among people who critique government especially when it comes to domestic borrowing because we have crowded out the private sector yeah. mm. and as a result we have increased the cost of borrowing Borrow and right. therefore once we handle the support the domestic revenue mm. mobilization strategy we are able to fund at least 70 percent of our budget as as for now mm. we can only fund 53 but this appears budget. to have been the but talk, uh, the lamentation yes, that's for the last 15 I, 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 years. That's why I'm telling you the that need uh, to be able uh, to fund our own budget. The URA mm. is under Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. But this time they made a deliberate effort to come and present as Uganda Revenue Authority, not okay. as a not sector, as a such sector that within the ministry. possibly the you can hear parliament, them out. yes, ca can make a difference. Okay. Yeah, two, you talked about um, the government expenditure, mm. including uh, MP yes, salaries. Including MP salaries. One, I want to assure the country that uh, MPs do not uh, increase salary, and uh, we are not going to have. Uh, a salary increment for members of parliament. Just to be yeah. clear, but now I, I am coming MPs to you. MPs are seeking. Yes, that was yeah. part of the discussion mm. with the president mm. before even they could come to, 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 to appropriate. And the president said, I think you are right, but the, the times do not allow. Mm. And there were no, sing, there were no Objections further yes, yes, mm. discussions. However, we have seen that. Uh, there is a lot of leakage, as my brother said, in mm. the budget uh, implementation process. And our biggest role as members of parliament, apart from making laws, is to provide oversight. Yes, monitoring and oversight. Monitoring. And to do the monitoring, one, the, there was a cut of the budget of parliament in the last financial year because of the COVID and also COVID restrictions. And now the increment, some of that increment is uh, as a result of to cover up what had been cut. Mm -hmm. But two, to provide the members with some kind of facilitation to enable them to do oversight. I want to tell you, we have a, a committee on foreign affairs. Their work is to try to find out how government is doing in terms of foreign policy. They are required to travel. Mm -hmm. But the committee never traveled the entire financial year. So if they have been facilitated 
Because we are finding some of these embassies in terms of capital development, mm. they needed to go and see what is happening what in is Dubai. Happening in they Dubai. have not traveled. So if they uh, they say 193 billion be increased uh, on the budget on the on on, on uh, the parliamentary budget to enable the members of parliament to carry out their oversight role. You see, we are talking about a budget of parliament which is uh, 1.5% of the national budget. Mm -hmm. We are not That's even... That's unsustainable. It is uh, around uh, 700 mm -hmm. billion, the entire legislature, mm -hmm. as an arm of government. That is... Uh, Unsustainable. Less than a trillion out of the 40? Mm? For one arm of government? Especially uh, given the fact that you said there wasn't any. No, ask him how much know? is given to the judiciary. Yeah, for example. But there wasn't any supervisory it's, it's role that was conducted as saying. a result of what was happening. So mm. why would there be an increment? It is literally of what is given to the judiciary. Mm. It's literally half of what he's saying. When Parliament increased the judiciary budget, mm. My brother was aware. Uh, he's here and he's very aware. The budget for the tri for b judiciary was less than 140 billion, and we increased it to 380. Around 300. Mm. Oh. Yes, around 380 uh, in, a mi in, a, in the in the medium term. Mm. So the increment does not only come to, to parliament. Actually, when you ask me, I will tell you that the the, the, the percentage increase for. for by parliament, uh, on the budget of parliament, vis-a-vis -vis the budget of the judicature. Mm. The other one is much bigger. But you see, focus on uh, statistics and percentages can blind you in uh, making a decision. For example, when you say 700 billion, and you give the expression that it is actually not much and shouldn't cause concern because of the percentage, then we not blind, that, we blind uh, ourselves to the we, realities When you the look at uh, what we do or what we are supposed to do mm. as, uh, as a parliament, mm. You see, the problem has been... Uh, uh, Your mandate is clear. How, how, as, do, how, how do you expect us you've to always, execute? As members of parliament, many mm. of the members of parliament have sought to give the impression that perhaps the public do not understand exactly how MPs spend their money or what they are supposed to spend their money on. To the extent that if, for example, there is the need for an increment, we should be in position to understand. But Actually, we should not be facilitated because mm. of how we spend our money. We should be facilitated <laughs> because of how, how our work. <laughs> you see, I cannot uh, delve into activities uh -huh. that do not, uh, not part of my mandate. Uh, but when, to on the, when on the defense, I, I come and are say quick I should to be give facilitated. I should be facilitated. Uh, please, I help us be facilitated some because of the that. work I, I, I do. I Let's hear I, Mr. Kolev. I think I should make a fair comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, generally speaking, and with all sincerity, the money that members of parliament get vis-a-vis -vis what uh, other countries in the region give their members of parliament, in Uganda at least, is still low. Mm. But those people, in those, the members of parliament in those other countries, they are few. They are fewer? That's one. Yeah. They are fewer. A and then two, their country, their countries, most of these countries are in, in the middle income status. We are not yet <laughs> there, even though we want to assume that we are there. We want that, uh, to be there. That's true. And we are working towards the that. The third one, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of members of parliament. Actually, I don't support them when they do crave to increase, to enhance their comfortability, mm. even in times as bad as this. Why? Because it is their responsibility. These people do budget allocation they do appropriation as mm. one of their roles now they fail to uh, to give to do that in accordance uh, with a, a strategy or to support strategies that would enhance mm. the income base such that we, we we increase our financial muscle and they resort to being stooges of the regime of the president mm. because when i talk of the president i mean the executive because literally the executive is the president. Why? Because even the ministers wield powers that have, that have been given to them by the president. So the executive nearly is the president. Now, 
These members of parliament have to go back to the drawing board. If they want to earn more than that, they should first enhance the financial standing of Ugandans mm -hmm. to the extent that they are able to fund at least 80% of our budget. If we are there, I will have no problem with them causing an increment on their salaries. Okay, Ugandans. talking about enhancing the ability of Ugandans to be able first and foremost to spend and pay taxes and perhaps allow members of parliament uh, to demand whatever they can demand. Before COVID, 1.72 million uh, graduates in the country uh, sought employment. Right now, the president has spoken about industrialization and how it's going to fix uh, everything. In terms of uh, the upcoming budget, what is the specific action points in terms of uh, ensuring that unemployment problem is tackled and that youth are allowed to be able to flourish and uh, be able to be uh, better contributors to GDP? Very quickly. One, under the Ministry of Gender, we have um, a program called uh, Green Jobs. Mm which we have funded mm. adequately, especially in this coming budget. Yeah. Because we have known and understood the importance of this program under the Ministry of Gender in terms of skilling mm. the youth and also providing them with startup capital. So we have, um, under the Ministry, you remember that we have um, reduced some of the money under youth livelihood project. Mm. And we intend to use it under the parish development model. However, we have increased the funding to, to over 100 billion for under green, ha green house jobs. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, something like 13 billion in, in the last three Prior, years. Yeah. But now we are, we are targeting almost 180 billion come 2023, 2024. And this we hope will we, we focus our youth to, 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 to try to get skills, practical skills, mm -hmm. and then seek capi uh, capital from the, the program, and then be start to. be able to do something. But two, the pa under the parish development model, we quickly. also hmm? very oh. quickly. Yes, we, we, we intend up. to. We, we have provided money. And uh, you know these are under the parish development model. We have seven pillars, but almost four pillars are are, are, are dedicated to production mm. and value addition. In this production and value addition, we intend to create almost three million jobs for the younger people in the agriculture in terms of um, engaging in the agro processing, mm. uh, commercial agriculture, and also trade. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. I'm afraid that we are out of time. That's what we had time for. However, the budget speech shall be covered extensively by NTV tomorrow. And of course, uh, we do hope you be part of the engagements on our social media platforms. Uh, that's uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook. We've been joined for Kickstarter, a discussion on the 48 trillion shilling budget that is due to be uh, delivered tomorrow by the finance minister, by Dennis Nyangweso, the MP for Samia Bugwe Central, and of course, our PO O'Claire, the spokesperson for the Democratic Democratic Party. Gentlemen, many thanks for making time. And that's it for Kickstarter. We shall take a break and return with a tech note where, of course, we shall be delving in a lot more other aspects that rotate around the aspects of budget. Stay with us. You're watching Morning at NTV. You're watching Morning at NTV.